Testing, testing, testing.
Testing, testing one, two, three, four, five, six. Devin Rossner. Testing. Testing, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, testing nine eight seven two one five ransom <laughs> Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three.
wait, count to like three, comes online, and now you're ready to talk. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to. Oh, good morning, everybody. Hear me a little better without my mask. Um, I'm coming up today just to give a heads up to all those watching on HHTV that were. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me better now? All right. Testing. How about that? A little, it's a little low here. Uh, we are troubleshooting some audio issues. So for all those watching on HHTV, there's going to be a slight delay from what you see and what you hear. So we've run into this one before. <laughs> so we, uh, when we rebroadcast, we're going to be able to fix that when we do rebroadcast. We're recording that and we'll make the adjustment. But for those watching today, uh, just be patient and trust your eyes over your ears, I guess. Um, Next up is I'm going to invite Elizabeth up, and we're going to kick this off. Okay, welcome everyone to the November meeting of the Residence Council. Just as an interesting accounting of who's here this morning, will all of you who have been living at Horizon House for at least five years, raise your hands. Okay, will all of you who have been living here as few as three years total, raise your hands. Okay, will all of you who joined this community within this current year, Please stand. Well, but you see, we have a job to do to see that our new people understand that this is one of the places you find out what's going on at Horizon House, okay? So spread the word. Uh, we're, um, of course, a number of our residents always watch at home on HHTV and some even later on YouTube. And that's always possible. And of course, the fireside chat, the small group sessions are other ways to find out about what's going on at Horizon House. But we have with us, first of all, the agenda for today to see what's happening at this meeting. We're gonna hear from the CEO. We got it up there, okay. 
And then uh, some of our monthly reports, including one concerning the close of our ERF drive. And I'm very anxious to hear that. And there will be two spotlight council committees today, the art committee and the committee on low vision and hearing challenges. Remarks from our two vice presidents are on current issues and the results of the election of the Council of Officers for next year. So let's hear first of all from Mike Ostrom with updates from the administration and maybe questions and answers. Okay. All right then, thank you, Elizabeth, and welcome. Glad, glad to be here to share some stuff. Some, some things are repeats uh, from what was shared at Fireside Chat, but different audiences come to different meetings. So a little bit of uh, replication, duplication is not, uh, not harmful. So Diversity Week, I think everybody saw that we had a great effort for Diversity Week, and we will be continuing those types of things throughout the year, uh, maybe on a quarterly basis. I think we all learn something and have different experiences that kind of separate us from, from places that you know don't share that kind of events and programming. We had our great shakeout. Each year we go through a, a, um, uh, a, a plan of, of what happens in a disaster. And you know we have turnover in staff and we need to make sure that people understand how we do certain things. We always learn something, try to improve on it. And this was no exception. We, we learned a few things about how we communicate with, with the different teams that go out through the building to assess damage and injury and so on. So you should just know that we do it so that we can be as best prepared should that ever happen. And hopefully it doesn't. And it's one of those things that you plan for, but you never have to execute on. Uh, we also had a benefits fair and uh, the uh, to walk our staff through our 2023 benefits where we're trying to do as much more as possible, one, reducing their cost of benefits so that they do not, staff do not pay as much for benefits. So that becomes a, an attractive point. Uh, also doing student loan assistance so that we can help pay for family members of our staff who are doing advanced education and find ways to be of value to our, our staff in that way. Uh, we also offer pet insurance. Okay. Who knew, right? You know, <laughs> you know, I mean, everything's insurable these days, right? Uh, but whatever, the, the thing is that you have to ask your staff what's valuable to them, right? And, you know, you and I might not be saying, well, gosh, you know, pet insurance uh, or bust, you know, for our staff, maybe that's a big deal. Well, We'll find out. We, you know, sometimes you throw some spaghetti on the wall to see what sticks. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes people say, well, we're really interested in that. And then they don't, they don't take advantage of it, or sometimes they do. So we'll find out. Uh, West Tower, I don't have any new updates on that. This is a complicated thing. I just got off of an hour call. I've got another one tomorrow, uh, talking through the economics of building in this time. And it is challenging. It's challenging from an interest rate standpoint. They, interest rates have gone up over twice what it was when we started the idea of this project. And so building costs, you know, and building in a high rise in an urban setting in an inflationary environment is, is hugely expensive. Now, that may be a relief to many of you going, yes, it is. It is going to, it's not going to happen but I'm not going to seek the cheering, uh, still working on it, but I don't want you to think that by not sharing something, I don't want to keep sending out memos to say nothing's happening uh, because then you'll say, aha, there might be something happening that I don't know about. They just won't tell me. No, we'll tell you when we got something to talk about. It's, it is complicated as heck. Um, let's see. So we'll only send out memos, you know, when we get into a cycle where there's things to, to talk about that, that uh, is truly an update. Uh, you know, there's a CEO search, uh, you know, process, and you you know that Mike Meekum, and I should just say a word about Mike Meekum. I hope that when you see Mike and other members of the, the board of trustees here, engage with him. Mike is making a very strong push to really understand life from a resident's point of view. And, you know, it's not like you're going to go to him and say, you know, the peas were cold. What are you going to do about it? But he does care about what matters to you. He wants to know and understand the nature of the community so that his decision making and his leadership within the board is in the context of knowing the community really, as opposed to just knowing it kind of through theoretical or through other people. So um, please go up and talk with him. He's a good guy, as are the rest of our, our trustees. 
And that's a shift from the past where there is a little bit more distance. And we're trying to bridge that distance so that you don't feel that the trustees are kind of in this, you know, uh, ivory tower up here and not really approachable. They need to be approachable because they need to be understanding you as residents in the in their decision process. So, uh, and Mike has done a great job so far on the CEO search. I think that we, you know, as we've said, they've got a great firm involved. That's good. And we've also been involving a lot of residents. And, and you saw the search firm was here last week. They were here for, I think, three days. And we had nine in-person focus groups, uh, which included 70 people plus trustees. And a lot of residents were included in those. And they learned a lot. And the critical thing is you can find people with the substantive skills to, to, to lead. But can you find the right people who have an understanding of the community and can, can use their skills to be able to make decisions in a community they understand and that they want to understand? So um, we've tried to press upon them and they have learned by their own experience what this community is. And it was great to hear them give feedback to what they heard so that we could see did they really get it and understand it? And the way they described what they experienced in all these, these, these focus groups was reflective of somebody who actually listened. I mean, it was really good. Uh, so I, I think we are working with the right firm and, and I'm, I'm optimistic that, that they will find candidates that you will be pleased with and that will ultimately be selected to, to take on the job. Uh, we've also had our four, um, uh, uh, quarterly meetings. We had about 57 participants in that. Uh, you know, those are the smaller groups where people can ask their questions. There were a lot of good questions that came up. And, uh, and, and then there are the things that kind of point out just how complicated it is to, to run the business, uh, the organization. So in, in one group, it was somebody who eloquently gave, you know, a very clear, very thoughtful um, message about the sodium content in the food. And they were very eloquent and they had really good points. And, you know, it was really compelling. And then the next person, three seats around said, when are you putting the salt shakers back on the table? <laughs> okay, just so you know, right? You know, you got one group over here and you got one group over here and they're both relevant, right? It's not like, well, that group was wrong and this group is right. No, the point is, this is the community. You have people who feel this way and people who feel this way. And our job is to navigate in the middle. We're not so that everyone feels, you know, sort of like unhappy. No, you're trying to figure out how to get everybody at least happy enough. Okay. <laughs> but that one like, just killed me. Like, when are you putting the salt shakers out? Are you just listening to that person? Okay. Um, we have a couple of people in, uh, oh, and by the way, the summary of our uh, small group meetings will be posted uh, uh, in the uh, admin board in the mail room so that you can see what the issues are. We, uh, 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 Beth does a great job of aggregating those, those notes, and then we pass them out to various departments to kind of look at, consider, figure out how they're, they're going to address things so that it's not just going into the, you know, the black hole. And you can then read and see what the issues were that came up. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of new people in our assisted living staff. Uh, Rena Henderson is a, a new social worker, and uh, I met her briefly. And just a really, you know, good, solid person. Fun to fun to have that person. Kat Royon, uh, an AL nurse manager. This this was really a big deal. We've been struggling to get uh, other nurse capacity in management roles. It's just not easy to do in this environment. Uh, and then Amanda Rubel, our AL sales uh, manager, we, we recognize that we really have to have dedicated effort to help the transition. It, it's not, you know, when we were out there talking about independent living, that is a very, as you know, when you came in, it's a very different conversation. The AL part is really a much more of a coaching and a working with Erica and now with Amanda to help find the right fit, the right transition stat strategy when it's necessary. We're always wanting to promote independent living as long as possible and figure out all the support mechanisms to help make that happen. And then there's a point when the lines cross where the cost of that care and the cost uh, are the, the, the um, not only the cost of the care, but the availability of the care that you need just can't be delivered to a person's apartment in the way that it might have in the earlier years when it, when it started to begin. And that's where we need to have, you know, thoughtful, caring people who can help with that transition so that, that 
you know, good living can continue, just maybe not in, in, in your independent living apartment. Uh, CEO monthly report will come out again. That's just another, you know, I always make that pitch, you know, looking for readership here. Uh, <laughs> it's a struggle. That's okay. Uh, and then fireside chat, uh, we'll have it December 2nd. And, uh, you know, fireside lounge uh, will be hopefully the last time we got to do the primary meeting because we're going to be able to open up Anderson Hall. I saw a bunch of residents coming out. Uh, first, I thought maybe they had been commandeered as uh, workers to help get the dang thing done. Uh, they didn't come out with hammers, so I was I was uh, comfortable that maybe they weren't workers. They were actually getting a preview of of how it looks in there, and and uh, hopefully that's I think that's going to enliven all of our lives by having that space. But this is this has been worked out pretty good for a you know pinch hitter. That's all I have. But questions? Anybody have any questions? I can take a few here. Yes. Oh, what? You know, let me confirm if there is one. Yeah, yeah, I'll follow up. Yeah, that should, there's no reason that there shouldn't be. We got it verbally, but I don't know if they sent one to us. Uh, but that would be actually, the question was, did the DEFIT group have a summary that of what their experience was of the community that we could share? And uh, they gave it to us verbally. I don't know if they left us with that written summary, but it would be great to share and I will find out. And if not, maybe just have them do it. Anybody else? Oh. Down there at the end. <clears throat> oh, Mike, this uh falls in the category of spaghetti on your wall, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we in the North Tower, uh, we're talking a lot. We have, we actually get together and talk a lot now because we have one small elevator for the last month. And uh, I think we, one of the suggestions by me and your businessman, you'll appreciate this. We should have a 10 to 20% reduction in our charges per, while it's big elevators out of commission. Well, well, what I have done, I just want you to know what I have done is I've taken out the coin meter in the elevator. So you no longer have to put coins in to get a ride. Uh, whether or not we're going to reduce fees every time something doesn't quite work, you know, probably not going to do that, but we got to fix this. Uh, we are in the process of, of, you know, we replaced a major cable uh, only like five months ago. And then it became somewhat problematic. And then we ended up talking with Otis, who was getting a new cable to install and to prevent the problem that happened before. You know, uh, it is not for lack of trying. Uh, it is not for lack of trying at all. And I don't want, even though it's easy to assume that, well, you know, somebody and, you know, Sean doesn't know what he's doing or Brian or whomever. It's not about that. It's, it's about, there's some complications here in this original design that is difficult to overcome by just quick fixes. And we're just trying to, we, I said, let's take it offline, even though it can be running now. I said, let's take it offline until we can have much stronger assurance that we're not gonna have a problem. Cause we don't need somebody to go in under the auspice of everything is fine, have that thing jerk a little bit and then go, what the, right? So um, hopefully we'll get that fixed and uh, then we'll put the meters back in and you can pay for your ride down. Okay. Anyone else? All right, thank you. Lynn Demerit. Lynn Demerit is next. Oh, she gets the mic. She gets that mic, right? Or you can sit over there. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So. As usual, draft minutes are sent out to board members shortly after they are written and board members get a chance to add corrections and additions. That has happened. So the question is, are there any further questions? Sorry, are there any further additions to the minutes? If there are no further additions or corrections to the minutes, then the minutes stand and are approved.
Good morning, I'm the treasurer. The uh, numbers should be appearing. We are finishing our seventh, our seventh month. So these figures are for seven months. We have five months remaining in our fiscal year. As you see, we had high expenses in October. We made a $15,000 donation to the Employees Recognition Fund and Residents Council, yes, good. Residents Council also paid for several social events. So our expenses were higher than usual. So we showed a loss, but we still have a profit for the year of $8,782. I'm hoping that with Anderson Hall opening, we will have more activities and more committees will be spending their budgeted amounts. I, we have projected in our budget a loss for the year, which is just fine. And I do hope that happens. Any questions? Thank you. So now Barbara will give the Monday market report. My figures will differ a little from Diane's because uh, uh, I have information she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so year-to-date Monday market sales are a little over $77,000. And our average weekly sales, uh, this is 32 market sessions from April 4th through November 14th. Um, is $2,400. 17% or 13,000 of our $77,000 total is from employee assisted living and department charges. We've also noticed that family and friends of residents contribute very generously to the market sales. Right now in the market, we are busy sorting, cleaning, and pricing the seasonal merchandise that has been accumulating since January. So be ready for display starting this Monday, and you can start holiday shopping at the Monday market. As always, new volunteers are welcome to help out. We are especially looking for people who might be interested in helping decorate the market for the season. $77,000 is a lot of money. And I, for one, am looking forward to exciting new resident programs now that both the Sky Lounge and Anderson Hall will be open. Crossing my fingers that uh, we can keep both COVID and the flu at bay. Next up, uh, Nancy McReynolds and the Employee Recognition Fund report. Today is the final day of the Employee Recognition Fund um, fundraising drive. Tomorrow, all signs will have been taken down. It will not be on the electronic bulletin board and HHTV, and Wilbur will not be lurking around, popping up in unexpected places. Thanks to the generosity of our residents, this year's Employee Recognition Fund drive has been a huge success. We have not only matched, but may have exceeded the total dollars raised last year. Our employees will receive a very generous check on December 4 at the holiday party planned for them and their families. Although today is the formal conclusion of this fundraising effort, and there will be no further requests for contributions, there are still a few days left to contribute. We will continue to accept donations through next weekend. However, in order to prepare for distribution of checks, checks received after next weekend will be credited to next year's fund drive. Final numbers will be announced at the December fireside chat. 
I want to take this opportunity to thank our residents for their wonderful generosity. Thank you to Sally Wren, my co-chair, and the team that has stuffed envelopes, processed checks, and placed acknowledgments in your cubbies. These individuals include Madge Hislop, Marion Myra, Diane Tinker, Marjorie Perdue, Marianne Parmeter, and Nancy Cope. A big thank you to our president, Elizabeth Hoover, who graciously answered, answered my endless questions and held my hand. Thank you to the Horizon House staff who always comes through. No matter wh what I asked of them, they were always there for me. And finally, a hug for Wilbur, who never knew where he was going to be left each day. According to the comments I have received, Wilbur has been a successful part of the team. I apologize if he has terrified anyone. <laughs> this has been a team effort and we are almost at the finish line. A great big hip hip hooray for making this happen. And next, we will hear from Elizabeth and Nancy Cope. I have more good news. This is concerning our annual council elections. As you now know, the newly elected members of the council are Jeff Graham, Ann Kelly, Ned Lang, Karen Smith, and Sam Sperry. Their three-year terms begin January the 1st. We give a special and sincere thanks to the nominating committee who worked and brought these strong candidates to us. The committee members are Bill Anderson, Madge Hislop, Alice Mullaney, Susan Barish, and Connie Hellyer, who was the chair. In accord with the bylaws of the Residence Council, I appointed three person special nominating committee of present council members to prepare a slate of nominees for officers of the council. The committee was composed of Beth Davis, Diane Tinker, and Nancy Cope as our chair. The committee presented the slate to the council at its planning meeting last week. All continuing new and retiring council members were eligible to make nominations from the floor as well as to vote. And the slate was, as presented, elected. Nancy is going to tell you a little bit about the committee's work. I'm going to push it down without breaking it. No, I'll leave it there. I think it's going to work. I'm not small, I'm short. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to say thanks to Beth Davis and Diane Tinker. We almost enjoyed this process. <laughs> and I want to announce the officers for next year. President Deanna Nelson, Vice President for Administration, Carol Roach, Vice President for Programs, Ned Lang, Secretary, Nancy McReynolds, and Treasurer, Karen Smith. Thank you very much for willing to do, you're willing to do this. There they are, folks. Okay. Do you want more time? We have in these new members and officers an outstanding group of people. You can see that with a range of talents and strengths and qualities. And the selection process is a time consuming effort with interviews and decisions to fill the particular needs of the council in its leadership. Special and sincere thanks to this special nominating committee who brought us this strong slate. And congratulations to all of you who have been elected to serve 
in various positions on the council this next year. Nancy Cope is now going to speak about the next issue on the agenda. Okay. I'm a coordinator of four committees that has the umbrella title of arts participation. Those committees are flower committee and holiday decoration committee and okay corral committee and the art committee. But I thought about those words art participation and I said, wait a minute, everybody who lives in Horizon House is on the Arts Participation Committee. Raise your hand if you have a favorite piece of artwork that you like to visit. Raise your hand if you like to go see the picture of the month outside the dining room. And raise your hand if you get lost and get on another floor and find a whole new separate art display. So, Today we get to hear from John Pound, the chair of the art committee. Thank you, John, for being willing to do this. Good morning, all. Uh, and thank you for that introduction, Nancy. I think you just made the main point of my talk, which is <laughs> we, we like having art around here and we invite everybody to participate in it. Uh, I am Joan Pound, the current chair of the Art Committee. And on behalf of the Art Committee, I wanna thank you for the spotlight for this morning. And um, I can't see the slides, so I think I wanna to go to, to the next slide, uh, the one that begins open to all residents. Yeah, okay, if that's what you've got up there. That's, that's the major point I wanna make and it uh, keys off what Nancy had to say. The Art Committee itself, right now composed of about 30 people is open to all residents and we invite the participation of, of everyone. Uh, you don't need to be an artist to be on the art committee, although if you are, we would welcome the benefit of your views and your expertise. Uh, but there is a separate art studio if you wanna practice your art or uh, learn more about uh, doing art. And that's under the capable direction of Marianne Counts uh, and uh, there will be more on that in a slide later on. For the art committee, there is the Residence Council uh, sponsored sign up uh, beginning in the first part of next year. And you can contact me at any time if you're interested in art. If you're just thrilled, as Nancy was saying, by all the art encounters you have here and you'd like to provide those to other people, feel free to contact me at any time and we can. Uh, talk about your interests and, and uh, how you might join some of our working committees. Because, uh, next slide, uh, the, uh, the real work of the art committee, as I mentioned, we've got about 30 members. Those members divide up into eight working uh, sections uh, that do all the things that we do. So uh, to briefly run over those, the annual art show, for the first time since I've been here, we did not have an art show last year because of the two C's, uh, COVID and construction. Uh, but we're well into the planning of a 2023 uh, resident and staff, and I should emphasize it's for residents as, and staff as well as residents, uh, art show. I'll return to that later on and give you more information on it. Uh, the second of our programs, picture of the month, Nancy mentioned it, this is the display each month in the approach from the lobby to the uh, TDR of an artwork that is owned but not made uh, by one of your neighbors among the residents of Horizon House. Uh, Horizon House is lucky to have a generous sprinkling of people here with fine and varied appreciation of art of many kinds and who own examples that they're willing to share with the rest of us. Picture of the month draws on the resources of these generous people to engage us with a new experience of art each month. In a somewhat similar way, but expanding the field a bit, the collections cabinet also presents a display changed each month of things collected by Horizon House residents. The collections cabinet though, is not just one object or artwork, but a collection of art or crafts or objects of fascination of any kind. The display may be all from the collection of one resident 
or it may be composed of, for the moment, uh, from uh, objects drawn uh, of a similar theme drawn from several residents. It's always interesting and even more interesting if you manage to attend the conversation with the collectors, uh, a, a new feature of the collection cabinet. Uh, watch the alert for the schedule of those conversations. It's always interesting to learn more about what drew someone to fascination with something and you may discover a shared interest you did not even know you had. Uh, the third of our working sections is the outside tours to artists' studios and museums. If you were on the trips to Mohai, to the Burke, to the museum in La Conner, you've had recent examples of the trips this section puts together. There won't be trips over the end of year holidays, but a trip to the Tacoma Art Museum is in the works for the start of 2023 and the section members are working to add some artist studios and other museums to that during 2023. We expect a full schedule. Gallery Talks is the fourth of our sections. The art lectures return almost as we speak. We are now, uh, let's see, did I move on? Uh, no, I don't think I'm quite ready to move on. I'm getting lost myself. We are now calling them Gallery Talks. And the first will be this afternoon, 3 p.m. in this very spot, the Fireside Lounge. Katie Stone, the creator of the well-loved installation, which I can see over here, but most of you probably can't see behind the screen. Uh, but the installation over the stair will talk about her career and not just that work, but her inspirations throughout the career. We hope you will be here. And 2023 will kick off with a presentation by Horizon House's favorite art historian, Rebecca Albiani, uh, who will do her well-known impersonation of Peggy Guggenheim for, for an initial program. We'll also have her a few more times during 2023, and we're developing other programs. So also there, we expect a full set of programs. Uh, there are three other activities on the list of uh, art committee sections. Docent tours. These are also coming back in 2023. These are tours by uh, co-residents of selected works out that are on display here in Horizon House. So if you're interested in what you see here, if you enjoy it, and if you want to learn more about it, we're Right now, we do have a set of self-guided tours that you could use. We're going to use those as the basis for redeveloping a docent-led tour program. Keep your eye on the alert uh, for that. Uh, and I, I should mention, I don't know if all of you might have seen the new Raven mask, which is down on B1. Uh, that's a rather splendid recent addition to our work, and it will be included in the uh, in the indigenous art uh, tour that we are developing to be the first of the docent tours that we put on next year. Uh, and that will cover not only the Raven, but the other indigenous works, which are mostly down on B1. Uh, so if you'd like to learn more about that, that keep your eyes open for an announcement. Uh, then the final two uh, working sections that we have are rather behind the scenes sections, but very important ones. One is curatorial, critically important, somewhat behind the scenes, a lot to do practically each week, acquiring and hanging new works like the Raven, uh, assisting residents to understand and follow the guidelines for hallway display of their own art, uh, trying to keep up with and re freshen up the uh, hallway art that is on each floor. Uh, we're still uh, and moving in, and this is a, a big one and, and an arduous one, uh, moving and protecting the art in the face of all the construction activities. Uh, then the final uh, working group that we have would be the cataloging group. And about that, uh, it's also largely a behind the scenes activity. And mostly what I can say is we are working on it. Uh, we have basic identifiers created for more than 800 of the things we have on display here. Uh, with more complete and information on the major 
items on public display. We're still in the early stages of labeling all the important items and of developing efficient methods of tracking and updating the inventory, but we are working on it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, oh, and one final thing to mention from the last slide, the executive committee is the last part of the art committee structure that I should mention to you. Uh, representative representatives are drawn from each of those eight working groups uh, and uh, we uh, add a few other people to them to form an executive committee that coordinates the activities of the eight working groups and also makes policy policy decisions and deals with the residence council and the staff uh, next slide uh, oh. Which one? Which one is it? Somebody tell me. Uh, okay, good. Yes, right. I, okay, I'm just going to skim right over this one because it's really just something of a little brag of all the things that we managed to keep doing despite the disruptions that we had there. So I won't spend much time on that, but go on to the next slide. Thank you, Risa. Uh, turning to the future, this is a listing of what the people I've just told you about are working on now. We hope that 2023 will be a restorative year. Please take the particular note of the gallery talk that occurs this afternoon at 3 p.m. right here. We hope you will be there. That's our first gallery talk. Uh, the ones next year will probably be on a different date, but we hope also in Anderson Hall with uh, full facilities. Uh, next slide. Now, here is some more detail on our hopes for the future and how you can be a part. The 2023 Annual Resident and Staff Art Show that I was uh, giving you a brief description of before. The theme of it this next year will be, it's all about art. And that will include the broad categories of art you can display, painting, collage, prints, drawings, calligraphy, ceramics, pottery, any of that we'd love to see. Uh, it will be March 9th and 10th. Entry forms will be distributed in January and probably due in early February. Uh, please participate, show your creativity, and share everyone's pleasure in sharing it with you. Uh, then uh, other things uh, that we'd like your participation in, uh, picture of the month and collections cabinet. You can help at any time by sharing ideas for either or both of these engaging and delightful displays. Uh, for picture of the month, uh, you see Ellen Carlin's name there. Two other contacts, uh, Danny Carr at extension 2656 or Ann Buckner at 2751. Please, if you have any good ideas for things, uh, for art that you know someone else here owns, uh, and that would make a nice display to share with everyone, please let them know. Uh, collections cabinet, a similar plea, but also two other contacts to add to Chuck's name that you see there. Uh, Carol Ottenberg at 2710 or Helen Spiro at 3141. Next slide. Likewise, the artists, studios and museum tours are always open to suggestion for art related experiences that might appeal to residents. If you please let us know about that too. Anytime you have an art experience you think others might enjoy sharing. And finally, uh, not finally, but uh, moving on, gallery talks, a similar pre plea. We're always open to suggestions of possible speakers on art topics. So please take note of those names and uh, uh, contribute your ideas to ours. Uh, next slide. I said we'd come back to the topic of the art studio, and I hope that's what's showing there now. Uh, uh, oh, good. Thank you. Uh, it's, uh, I, just to emphasize the point, the art studio is a separate activity, but related to the art committee. It's under the capable uh, direction of Marianne Counts. And something I should add to what you see about the holiday sale there, all proceeds from that will go to Monday Market. Uh, next slide. Just a quick thank you and acknowledgement to the people who make the art committee sections work. 
with my apologies if I omitted any, anyone. Thank you all for your kind attention. I think the next person up is our new president, Deanna. Okay. Good morning. As the coordinator of the liaison committees for this year, I'm really pleased to introduce Jenny Stimson, who is the co-chair of the Low Vision Hearing Challenge Steering Committee. This committee is a powerhouse. They've done terrific work. I've been to their meetings and they awe me. Um, and she's here to talk about some new special news that she has for you and what they've accomplished to make your lives better. Thank you, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Thank you for those kind words, Deanna. Um, the, is the slide up then? Okay. So I'm the co-chair of the committee. Um, Kathy Cullen works with me. And I'll just tell you, it's such a delight to have a co-chair because um, when you do these committees, you always wonder, well, where's the leadership gonna come from? And I'm gonna continue forever, I hope not. And um, <laughs> so thank you for that. Next slide. Um, I wanna acknowledge to Mary Kinney, who has been the co-chair with me through um, much of this past year. She and Ruth Ship Dart were on the communications committee and they recognized that there was a need to advocate for people who had low vision. So I'm gonna mention that um, two years ago, we added people with hearing challenges but they wanted to um, promote an understanding of what low vision means and how it impacts the lives of residents. And all of us know that, right? I mean, we're there now or we're headed that direction with our vision challenges. They wanted to help create policies and practices that serve the interests of people with low vision and to advocate for, the, advocate for those needs with the administration and the residents' council. And so we, try to anticipate and learn from you about what needs to be done and make sure that your needs are addressed. And we make residents aware of professional aids that are available uh, for persons with low vision. So we have a, on the HH Connect website, we have some um, a place where there's a list of tools that people that are residents here have said, this works really well for me. So for instance, somebody will ask, what's a really good magnifying um, device with a light on it. And we share that there. Or if someone says, what's a good device? What's a good telephone to buy? We post that there. So we try to communicate between residents about what they found is useful. Um, so we started off doing all those for people, the next slide, for, with vision challenges, but I mean, then we added hearing challenges. And so, um, to learn about that, some of you will call on the telephone and say, hey, Jenny, this is what's needed or here's my problem. But also we put out surveys and it's so helpful. You know, there's a current survey in your mailbox that we're hearing back from people, but we've used the surveys to find out from you um, what are the challenges that you're facing. And it's so helpful to us. And you've, and you've been so responsive in filling out those responses. Um, we tally those responses, and um, especially we look at those comments you have. Um, and you are the people that inform our work and invigorate us to do things. I just want to say how important it is to get that information. Um, we're using the input from residents to create programs related to vision and hearing that are, would be of interest to all residents here. Because if you don't face those challenges now, you may, and you certainly have friends here who have those challenges, so you can learn about those. Um, a few of the people on our committee, for instance, who have um, hearing challenges, talk about how important it is for everyone here to realize what helps them. You know how I just remembered when I'm saying this that I should be looking at everybody when I talk. <laughs> how important that is that you look directly at people and that you speak slowly and distinctly for them. And um, people who have hearing challenges, we really want to encourage you to say to people, slow down, please, you know, help me. Could you say that again? So if someone says that to you, 
They're saying, you're my friend here. You're helping make my life better here. Help me out. Um, like I said, we've de list, developed a list of resources and we're trying to foster practices here. And I'll have to say the communications department has been really helpful. They changed the signs for a little while, do you remember, in the elevators? And they had a lot of detail, but not clear print. And we said, people get in those elevators for a short period of time, and they want to know quickly what's happening today. And there's other times when we've talked with the um, communications people about what helps, and they ask questions, like the new name tags they changed the font on the new name tags according to the information we had about the best print. It, that, that makes us feel good to have that. Um, programs planned for the um, coming month. Yesterday, Riley Curran came from uh, Washington Talking Books. Unfortunately, we only had 10 residents who came to that presentation. It was in the Sky Lounge. The Washington Ta Talking Books makes books available at no cost. It's uh, funded federally. And you can get um, a device that's really easy to use. If you touch a button, it reminds you what that button does. So if you have vision problems, my, my mother used this and it was so fabulous because she'd say, wait, which is the button that reverses or which is the button that does such and such. But now what happens is you can, you tell them the kind of the genre of books that you like or the authors that you prefer, and they give you a cassette with up to 12 books on it. And you can get as many of these cassettes as you'd like. And they have their app now to work on a smartphone too. So you could listen to the books through a smartphone. It's no cost for the machines. It's no cost for the um um, to have the tapes made and um, they don't penalize you if you lose them. They just made a big point that what they want to do is make it accessible. And they were saying, I hadn't thought of this, that for some people to use this, it's the people who have maybe um, some difficulty with their hands holding books, that it isn't just a vision challenge. And um, you, you can go... Um, we, we can arrange for you to be qualified for this service here at Horizon House. So you don't have to go to a special place. You can um, get a hold of these. Um, but the, another kind of category you see there is that we try to stay in touch with the specialists in our area at um, say the University of Washington where they're doing research. And we have um, Dr. Van Gelder coming on January 12th to talk about current and anticipated treatments of macular degeneration, glaucoma, and other vision challenges. So people, residents here have said they wanna know what's happening and what's about to happen. And he's going to come and speak with us on January 12th. Tina Warman from the University of Washington um, Department of Speech and Hearing is gonna do a similar thing related to hearing devices. And she's coming on January 26th. Another, um, person that we've heard about. We haven't yet set up the date. You know, it's that dance between when the Anderson Hall is going to be available and when the person can come. Well, we haven't gotten the dance completed with this woman, but she did a really good presentation um, that we were able to see on tape. And we think that she would be a powerful speaker here for um, people to learn more about what's happening with our eyes as we grow older. And then Sam is going to go back to having those special field trips for people who have vision problems. And when that happens, we wanna arrange for people from here to get down to the Sam to take advantage of how they support people with vision challenges to see their ex and experience their exhibit. So the reason I'm speaking today is um, because we got a GEM grant um, to improve the lighting in the dining room. So one of the complaints we hear about both hearing and vision are difficulties that people have in the dining room. And for people who can't see well, um, what we've done is we've purchased six lights like this and they're LED lights. Um, the Lighthouse for the Blind said these were the best ones we could get to put on the dining table. So 
I don't know if you're there yet, but my mother was, she couldn't discern her food on her plate sometimes because the lighting was low. So if you just ask the waiter to bring this to your table, there's lamps like this that are there and they have three different levels and they're easy to use. And another thing that's nice is they're rechargeable like your phone is so they can plug them in. And the gem grant also paid for the recharging station. So thank you to all of you who, um, Monday Market and all of you who make those things possible. For a while, we've had these clip-on lights available in the dining hall and you can clip those on a menu. I think this is ironic because I picked it up and the light didn't work, but anyway, but it, they have these there. And so if you, your problem is mainly reading the menu, you can just ask. And again, for both of these, you just ask um, people. So I think this is such a celebration for residents council because it's the work of the gem grants and the work of Monday market. And it's the work of committees to make sure that we have the things that we need. And I was saying to the committee, I said, how are we gonna tell people about this? And they said, you're gonna call Elizabeth and say, can I get on the agenda? And thank you <laughs> for doing that. So, um, and then I just wanna say for the last thing is right now in your mailbox, we're asking you if you have vision or hearing challenges to let us know because um, we put extra slips in your mailbox when we have programs, if we know you have those challenges. For people with vision challenges, not all, everyone follows the alert, for instance. We have a larger copy of the alert, but what we do is we put an extra message in your mailbox. And then I asked on the questionnaire, I said, let us know if you want those extra messages. And one of my friends said, no, I don't like wasting paper, Jenny. I want an email. Dang, I didn't put that as a choice, but I just want to tell you, if you prefer an email message, we can make a larger print email message to you also. So I, I love the committee that we have to do this. The people that are on there have um, mostly volunteered because they want to help people at Horizon House. They themselves have experienced some challenge or they have family members or friends with challenges. So it's a wonderful committee. And if you feel like you're so inclined, we would love to have you join us also. So thank you very much. And the next person's gonna speak is May Gerstle. I've admired residents and staff these past two years. People have, are so resilient and you have found so many ways to get together to keep our resident run committees innovative and alive. Now that we have both new residents and new gathering spaces, we need to look ahead and do some succession planning. The leaders of the current committees are moving on. They've done their job for years and we would like to have some new younger people, new residents come and step up and take the helm. So if you have any questions, um, ask anybody in that interest group or for that, for that matter, anyone on the residence council and they will be more than happy to guide you, and let you know what each committee does and how you can get involved and how you can join in. If no one is willing to um, lead and chair a committee or an activity, that group might cease to exist next year. So this is your opportunity to work and to have fun with others. And um, this is really the essence of a resident driven community. We educate and we help one another. And it is both fun and rewarding. Have you ever considered being a mentor? That's another way that you can impart what you have learned and help a new person. So if you have any program questions, just ask any of us on the council and we'll be more than happy to guide you, answer your questions. The names of all of the and the contact information of all the resident council members and the coordinators are, is in the uh, mail room. And um, feel free to call. The next person who's going to speak to you is Judy Ostro.
I have another one of those short ones. I'll have to stay on my tiptoes, but I don't want this thing to break. <laughs> I hope you can hear me. I'm an old school teacher. I should be able to reach the back of the room. Um, I'm going to talk about the employee recognition party. Um, we are mercifully, we do not tip here at the Horizon House. Think how many times a day you would be tipping for all the uh, interactions you have and the services and the kindness from our many uh, employees. But we do reward them monetarily at the end of the year by the Employee Recognition Fund, which Nancy talked about earlier. And we surround that, the giving out of the checks with a party. Now, those of you who have been here any period of time can remember how wonderful the party is. Um, the last two years we've had to do a very reduced version, but the employees still got their checks and a little treat. But we're going to resume the, the party this year on December 4th. So all the stuff that everybody remembers, there'll be refreshments, the cookie bake, which Lynn is organizing. And we certainly hope that all our bakers will bring her plenty of cookies to, for the, to distribute. Uh, we will have Santa Claus. And this year, Mrs. Santa Claus will join us. Uh, we have the uh, balloon elf. We have music. And down on the lower level, we'll have the popcorn machine, crafts and games for children. And it's the party you remember and the party you will remember again after this year. So if we, I have lots of volunteers. I could always use more. So, uh, but the part of that, uh, and I'm afraid the party is only for the, for the employees because uh, it's, they bring their families and it's a very special day for them. So watch out for the December 4th employee party. Thank you. Uh, Paul Parham is our next speaker. So. <laughs> I'm going to talk about uh, car sharing and uh, the study that we uh, started, to, oh, I guess about three months ago. The genesis of the study was really a question that was submitted by Professor Fowler to the administration about uh, whether they would be interested in having car sharing at Horizon House. Uh, the response was a very enthusiastic, yes, we would really look forward to that. And I was very fortunate to have um, as my partner on this study, uh, Bill Roach, who actually started a car share program for Metro and the city of Seattle. It's called FlexCar. Flexcar was subsequently uh, taken over, bought out by um, Zipcar. And Zipcar played an important part in result of our findings. Uh, the initial findings, which are they up now? Um, on the surface, car sharing seems like a simple process. You schedule a time, uh, the vehicle, and then go and get it. But we encountered several questions. Where is the car? Can it be conveniently located? Is it adequately insured? How is it scheduled? How is it maintained? How do we promote the concept to residents? And more importantly, how do we gauge resident interest in car sharing itself? After all of these questions, we came up with two actions that we're going to proceed with. And I add at this point that we are doing this under the auspices of the Environment Committee, a special subgroup, uh, the car share. Action one is we will work with Zipcar in the city of Seattle and Horizon House to secure a nearby location, most likely Terry Street, because uh, University Street between Terry and Ninth is uh, very busy, as you will all notice. Uh, Zipcar has been in the business for over 25 years in Seattle. 
and has worked through many of the car share issues. Uh, the reservation software, which you can have on your cell phone, um, insurance, car maintenance, emergency help uh, that makes it easy uh, to join. I think the only downside that I can see on this aspect of it is that uh, Zipcar would be available to all residents in this area. And so those people from the apartment complex that wanted to use Zipcar would be able to do it. Um, the second action that we recommend is working with uh, uh, Brian Holtz and uh, Joan Hudson uh, to explore a pure Horizon House uh, user operation. Um, this option would include both residents and staff and have the possibility of being completely internal and managed and run by Horizon House and possible use of electrical vehicles. Uh, I'm sure those of you that uh, have vehicles in the central garage uh, have noticed the addition of the new charging stations that they've added there. So that's a, a real possibility. Uh, this is where Eli will cringe as I put on my project manager hat and say, this option is going to need some work. Uh, we're going to have to understand the user requirements we're going to have to write a statement of work, and we're going to have to define what the work elements are and who's going to do them. We also have to define roles and responsibilities. Um, obviously, this will be a program that will be administered by Horizon House, and our efforts as uh, the Environment Committee and, and residents will be to help promote this in any way that we can. Um, those of you that are interested and have questions, um, why don't you catch me after the meeting? Because in the essence of time, since we're running over, I would like to pass this on uh, next to Carol Roach. Hello, just a quick announcement. First, uh, this year's Residence Council has completed its efforts to update our bylaws and policies. We've made 22 changes in all and plan to have the updated bylaws printed and available on HH Connect by December 1st. And now the burning questions. There's only one for this, uh, this month, but here it is. I was, uh, this is from uh, Erica Campbell. No, oh, no, sorry, it's not, the answer is from Erica Campbell. Here's the question. I was happy to read the announcement from Erica Campbell about two new Horizon Half staff, both focused at least in part on the increase in mental health challenges among Horizon House residents. Will these new staff be available to collaborate with the new mental health advisory group that was recently formed by a group of Horizon House residents who are retired mental health professionals? So that's the question. And the answer comes from Erica Campbell herself, who is our talented and deeply appreciated care connector. The following is a summary of Erica's answer. Of the two individuals who will be joining us soon, one is an intern and the other does not have a counseling background per se. So I will be, I, Elizabeth, uh, Erica, will be the liaison for them at the Horizon, at Horizon House. Their names are Mariko and Rina. As we begin to work together, I'll be looking for areas where their skills and interests coincide with needs we recognize among our independent living uh, and in, uh, assisted living residents. As a starting point, we currently plan a 10-week expressive art therapy program that will serve eight residents in uh, uh, independent living, and that will be co-facilitated by Marico, and it will also serve eight residents in assisted living, and that one will be co-facilitated by Rena, 
And incidentally, we've been hearing a lot about art programs here and about our wonderful art studio and the art studio will be the venue where, where that uh, work happens. A second project designed to meet the needs of resident groups will be a grief education seminar, also held separately in both independent living and assisted living. Erica says she looks forward to sharing these and other plans with the mental health advisory group. She's looking for residents who might be interested in co-facilitating some process groups with her. And she would absolutely love to partner with residents who are mental health professionals in a variety of ways. Thank you, Erica Campbell. And now is your chance. If you have a concern about anything related to the Horizon House community, even if you're just curious about something, please meet me here at the Fireplace Lounge right after this meeting. I'll be here for at least 30 minutes. And it's my job to find one or more individuals who are qualified to respond to your questions and to make those answers public at the following regular resident council meeting. So bring your burning questions to the fireplace. Okay, folks, does anybody here have any question further or any comment about anything that occurred during this meeting today? Okay, I have one announcement I've been asked to make, and that's it. A dining service committee member will be at, the ta at a table here in the far side lounge after the council meeting to discuss any questions or comments you may have. So in closing, I say happy Thanksgiving to you all. At this beginning of 